Oh hey, Omnibus Collectors! Didn't see you there. It's me, Riley, from Population Goes Comics Department, and I'm back after a bit of a hiatus with another Omnibus of the Week. Uh, if you've watched the videos I've been posting on my channel recently, you know that I've been a bit under the weather. Um, but <clears throat> I'm more or less better now, and I'm ready to deliver something I've been pretty excited about. So this time, my Omnibus of the Week is... Uncanny X-Force by Rick Remender. Now this is a series that I really loved when it was being published. So of course when it got released as an omnibus I had to snatch it up and I recommended it to everyone. Now I, I read it since issue number one and I was hooked. The series has fantastic writing, fantastic characters, just fantastic everything. The artwork is just amazing all the way throughout and it's really just one of my favorite comics of recent years, and it definitely climbed to the top of my favorite X-Books, which is something to say because I'm a huge X-Men fan, so there's a lot of X-Men books that I really love. Uh, one of them I've already covered in Omnibus of the Week was uh, Grant Morrison's new X-Men. So, Uncanny X-Force, written by Rick Remender. This is the uh, first Uncanny X-Force series. There was another one that followed this one, uh, written by Sam Humphreys. Uh, I read the first volume of that. wasn't too terribly impressed, so I didn't go on. The, uh, the book has Wolverine as the main character leading his own X-Force team. It's like a secret task force that, uh, unlike the previous secret task force, nobody, like not even the other mutants, know about it. So he did this behind uh, Cyclops' back. And with him, he's got uh, the main team featured on the cover. You've got Deadpool down here, Psylocke here, Phantom X up here, and Archangel up at the top. Uh, Phantom X being uh, one of Morrison's creations, uh, who hadn't really been featured as a big character since Morrison's new X-Men run. So it was really exciting to see him here, and Remender does a lot of great stuff with him. Um, another thing of note is Deadpool is awesome in this book. I'm a fan of Deadpool, but uh, I grew really, really weary of Daniel Way's writing of the character, which was being published around the same time that this series was, uh, because Daniel Way kind of used Deadpool as the punching bag of the Marvel Universe, just cheap, you know, poop jokes and stuff. And after reading Joe Kelly's run and uh, seeing how good that was, I really got this understanding of how deep and dark of a character Deadpool can be while also maintaining the insanity and hilariousness that people love him for. And Rick Remender really captures that in this book. So anyway, um, let's take a look at the book itself. I'll talk more about the characters and the writing in a bit. There's the front cover. There's the spine. Here's the back cover. It doesn't have the, uh, you know, the cover roll that most of the omnibus do. Um, so you don't get all those covers on the back, like a lot of them do, to show you what's inside the book. Underneath the, uh, well, let's look at the uh, inside, front and back. You've got the uh, description of the book on the inside, and then the creators on the back side. Here's what the uh, front cover looks like underneath the, uh, sorry, the dust jacket. Here's the spine and the back cover. It's one of the uh, images from one of the covers of the book. And on the inside, uh, let's just look quickly at the binding. Really nice binding right there. Nothing to complain about. Got at the front, title page, credits. And then we go straight into the story. Then at the back, let's see all the uh, supplemental materials. After the last issue collected in here, we get that's one of the uh, variant covers, some more variant covers, some artwork, variant covers, more covers, some stuff, some artwork, script stuff more interior artwork, interior artwork, some nice artwork, some stuff. So there's a fair amount of uh, supplemental materials in this. Uh, a good amount of sketch work from the various artists that worked on the interiors of the books. So that's pretty cool. 
And yeah. So good amount of supplemental material. So the book collects the entirety of Uncanny X-Force. It was, I believe, 35 issues. Let me double check the back of this. Uh, yeah, 1 through 35. And then there was 5.1 and, what, 19.1. And then it has material from Wolverine Road to Hell number 1 and uh, All-New Wolverine Saga and X-Men Spotlight. Those last two, I believe, were... Uh, some of the supplemental material in the back where you see a lot of the text and whatnot kind of explaining like this is what's been going on with uh, the X-Men and this is what's been going on with Wolverine and it talks about how you know he was doing stuff before that and then he comes into this book anyway um, there's a lot of fantastic artists that did work for Uncanny X-Force starting with uh, Jerome Opeña he draws the opening story arc uh, The Apocalypse Solution uh, and then we get Assad Rebic does the, uh, what is it called, Deathlock Nation arc. Uh, Phil Noto did a lot of the second half of the book. And then there's a few issues by uh, Philip Tan. Uh, was it Phil? No, was it Billy Tan? I'm going to double check because I always, I always get them mixed up. Uh, Curses artists that have the same last name. There's an issue with Rafael Albu Albuquerque who did, um, who does American Vampire. There's, a uh, yeah, Billy Tan, not Philip Tan, Mark uh, Brooks, Robbie Rodriguez, who's doing uh, the Federal Bureau of Physics series for Vertigo right now, and Greg Toccini, who is working on uh, the series Low from Image with um, Rick Remender right now. And then there's uh, Mike McCone. Julian Totino Tedesco, who does a lot of cover work, uh, and Dave Williams, and that is, uh, that's all. So let's take a look at some of that artwork. Let's look at the, uh, there's a fan-freaking-tastic page by Jerome Opeña right there. He has a really nice, uh, detailed style, which is, like, all the artwork in here is really, uh, benefited from Dean White. Uh, doing the uh, doing the colors and stuff. Let's move forward to another. Here's some more Noto artwork. Uh, Phil Noto, or not Noto, um, Jerome Opeña. Uh, he also did some Avengers stuff with uh, Jonathan Hickman at the opening of that series. I believe he's going to be working on some of the issues of the Axis event that's coming out. Uh, he's got a Avengers graphic novel that he's going to do with Rick Remender that should be published, I believe, next year. Uh, here's some more nice artwork. Just a quick flash of the artwork because I don't want to give any spoilers to people who haven't uh, read this book yet and who want to. Um, there's a really nice page right there. And kind of spoilers on that one, so I just flashed it real quick. But if you don't want spoilers, pause it and look at that because it was a nice page. Um, sorry if it's blurry. Let's see, there's some uh, Raphael Albuquerque right here. Fantastic. I really love him from uh, American Vampire. And then uh, here's some Asad Rebic. Asad Rebic you might know from uh, Jason Aaron's Thor God of Thunder series where he's doing amazing work. Um, his work here is really good but I have to say it's not nearly as good as what he's doing in the uh, Thor God of Thunder series. Um, he also did some work on the X-Men uh, Battle for the Atom storyline. He does a lot of cover work. Amazing artist. Just simply an amazing artist. I, I can't, like, say enough. And then here's a little bit of the uh, of Billy Tan artwork. Billy Tan's good, not uh, not as good as some of the others in here, but I do enjoy his artwork. His his work on the chapters he did in here is actually some of the best I've seen from him, so no complaints from me uh, with Billy Tan. Uh, there's more Jerome Opeña, of course, amazing artwork again. So freaking good. I, I, I could go on and on about Opeña's artwork. My least favorite artist in here has to be Greg Toccini. Um, because his art actually came out kind of muddy looking. Um, and I think it looks a lot better on these pages than it did on the uh, smaller pages of the original issues. The oversized artwork really 
spreads it out a little and lets it be a bit easier to understand what's going on. There's just so much of it that like it's got heavy inks and and stuff, so it, it looks really muddy. Um, not to mention that the arc that he worked on with uh, Remender, the Otherworld arc, was probably my least favorite of the series, but it, it was a good kind of uh, bridge between point A and point B, point A being the first half and B being the second half of the series. And here's uh, some artwork from one of Phil Noto's issues, and then Phil Noto would take over and do a lot of the latter half of the book. Um, so I'm just going to show a little bit from Noto. And yeah, so there, there's a good idea of what all the artwork in here looks like. So a lot of really great artists worked on this book. I can't stress enough like how many good artists. And that's really cool because that means that artwork is going to be amplified in quality, in my opinion, by being put on these oversized pages. Um, the oversized pages really just, I, I think, always makes artwork pop a lot better than it does on the standard pages. Um, but these artists, Opeña, Ribic, uh, Noto, those artists just look fantastic on these oversized pages, um, which is one of the reasons why I recommend grabbing, you know, these oversized books like this. Um, so the book itself, uh, the story is, I, I said that Wolverine gets his own, uh, like, Black Ops crew, and he starts going on missions. The first one is a mission to basically take out this new apocalypse. There's a, a child who is uh, turned into the new apocalypse, essentially. I'm not going to get into details, because you probably want to read it if you haven't already. And uh, they go on this mission, and they have to take him out and stuff. And it's it's this big, uh, you know, uh, it's it's this look at, at morality in superheroes. And uh, each arc kind of has another look at morality. Like, should we, you know, what should we do about a, a child who could eventually become apocalypse you know he's not a threat now but eventually he could be what do we do about that uh there's an old man uh who they have to take out at one point they're like you know he's just an old man you know um he did something in his past but he's not doing anything now what, what do we do about that um you have uh you know this is someone who is related to someone uh what do we do about that you know it's it's just these choices and it, it gives you these choices and and uh you know, what choices do heroes make? And do these choices make these heroes less of heroes or not? And then in the final arc, um, it was the uh, final execution is the, the ending of the series, brings it all to a head, and it really asks the question, like, what makes these heroes the heroes compared to the villains who... You know, they're both doing the same heinous acts of murdering people. It's just that, uh, essentially, the, the good guys uh, are looked at a little better in the public eye. But what really makes them better than the bad guys? And that's the question that this book begs to ask. And Remender writes it just so well. And it really just hooked me from, like, page one of issue one to the last page of issue 35. And I just adored this entire series. So I was extremely excited to see that it was collected in here um, in one giant volume. Uh, so it's a really, you know, great book full of a lot of great character work. Uh, you get really, you know, some of the best that I've seen for basically every character involved here. Um... You know, I talked about Deadpool was really good in here. You get a lot of Phantom X, which you didn't get much of Phantom X before, so it's a lot of good character work developing who he is. Um, fantastic stuff for Wolverine in here. I think that together, Remender and Jason Aaron were really doing some of the best work with Wolverine that had been done in a long time. Um, this was all done, like, in these past couple years. Uh, you know, Psylocke has a lot of interesting stuff happen in here, especially in the, the uh, other world arc. Uh, where she's faced with the rest of her family. Uh, Archangel, the Dark Angel saga is one of the greatest X stories, flat out, one of the greatest X stories, uh, focusing, and it focuses on Dark Angel, and then you get a big evolution from Archangel uh, after this, and, uh, you know, 
So it's a lot of great stuff, a lot of great character work, um, a lot of great stuff that continues upon plot lines that were introduced in other books. Um, if you're a fan of New X-Men, there's a lot of stuff that Remender brings forth in here about the uh, Weapon Plus organization. Um, like, you know, Phantom X is in there, and you also see um, the world. You see uh, Ultim Ultimaton, or Ult Ultimaton. I forgot how you pronounce his name, but one of the, the weapons. There's a lot of the different weapons from the Weapon Plus program are brought in here and it all you know it kind of this cohesive uh web of stories that you know continue from what morrison was doing in a way and then goes into here in uncanny x-force and then you see it again in, in uh jason aaron's wolverine and the x-men and those these two series wolverine and the x-men and uncanny x-force kind of like weave together and form this like organic cohesive story that was happening for the past few years and then everything else that uh rick remender was doing kind of ties into this so his secret avengers kind of connects to what he was doing in here and uh and then this bleeds into his uncanny avengers which is going to further go into the other stuff that he was doing so everything that remender was doing around this time kind of comes together um, but I have to say this, uh, Uncanny X-Force is the best of all that stuff that he was doing. And it's really fantastic to have it in this one volume, and I really recommend it. Um, so there's almost 40 issues of material in here. Cover price is $100. Um, it's been out for a few months, and I'm not quite sure... Um, if it's sold out, I think some people have told me that it is a little difficult to find. You should still be able to find it at cover price. Um, if you are at all interested in the series, I would recommend just splurging on the Omnibus because honestly, uh, there's what, like six volumes of... It's like six, eight, something like that. Say like seven volumes of the series paperback um you'd almost spend the same amount for this as you would on all the paperbacks and just the the hard covers the individual hard covers of the series are pretty hard to find um they went out of print and a lot of them go for higher prices online so i recommend it if you if you enjoy collecting omnibus collections if you are like me and you enjoy the premium format comics like i do then i definitely recommend picking it up in the omnibus um especially if you can have for a good price. Uh, if you can't find it for a good price, hold out a little bit because Marvel is releasing two paperback collections, the complete collection by uh, of Uncanny X-Force by Rick Remender. Uh, those are going to be released pretty soon. So if you had, didn't buy this and you don't want to spend so much, grab those. It'll be a little cheaper. But I really recommend the, the uh, story, the series. It's fantastic stuff. Um... So yeah, Uncanny X-Force by Rick Remender with uh, Jerome Opinia, Esad Ribic, Phil Noto, Billy Tan, Mark Brooks, Mike McCone, and with colors by Dean White. Highly recommended. As a X-Men fan, I said that this is one of my favorite X-Series of all time, and I am not exaggerating. This book is fantastic. So if you are a fan of the X-Men, if you're a fan of Wolverine, if you're a fan of Deadpool, if you're a fan of good comics, if you're an Apocalypse fan, if you're just... If you're a fan, grab this book. This is a fantastic series. I highly recommend it. Cover price for this one is $99.99. Find it. Make it yours. I hope you love it as much as I did. So, thanks for watching another Omnibus of the Week. Very happy to be able to do another one of these for y'all. I appreciate all the likes, all the comments. Subscribe to the channel, watch my other videos, stay tuned for more stuff, check out the Tumblr page www.theomnibuscollector.tumblr.com where I post stuff about what books I'd like to see, what books are upcoming, and I answer tons of questions from readers and viewers. Um, I really answer anything. You can ask me whatever you want and I'll give the best possible answer I can. I, I don't really care. Uh, I just enjoy all the fantastic readers and viewers I have, and I appreciate 
every bit of attention that you guys give me because it really makes me feel like what I'm doing is something great. Um, and I'm glad that you all appreciate it. So again, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll be back. I promise next time it'll be less time in between my two Omnibus of the Week videos. Hopefully I will be able to get one out in the next week. Um, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Stay cool. And I'll see y'all next time.